As the premier option in the compact crossover segment, the Honda CRV needs to check a lot of boxes, and luckily for both the Japanese automaker and its buyers, it does so with a plume. Above all, the versatile family SUV is fuel efficient, practical, comfy, and more than well appointed. However, not everything is hunky dory in the Honda Compact's world, so stay with us as we explore seven reasons why the Honda CRV might not be the best choice for you. Reason number seven. Subbar performance. The Honda CRV will offer you a choice between a conventional and hybrid powertrain, but neither option is particularly impressive performance wise. In fact, the hybrid is slightly peppier than the base models thanks to a combo comprising of a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine and a duo of electric motors. Still, its total net output of 204 horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque translates to a mediocre 0 to 60 miles per hour time of just shy of 8 seconds. The base 1.5 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder with 190 ponies and 170 79 pound feet on tap is even more sluggish as it tends to hit the 60 miles per hour mark in a little under 8.5 seconds. Needless to say, competition typically fares much better, especially in a hybrid guise where the Toyota RAV4 Prime, for instance, humiliates the CRV by reducing its acceleration cycle by roughly 30%. It's the same old story when comparing the CRV's turbocharged engine with, say, the Ford Escape's 4 banger. Yes, the competition also provides roughly 30% more power in both cases, but that's Honda's problem, not theirs. Despite the underwhelming powertrain duo, every Honda CRV rides smoothly and confidently. The compact's relatively wide and long frame helps dampen out the more textured roads. Not to mention how Honda's engineers have managed to nail the CRV suspension on the head, making up for the lack of excitement with more than the fair share of poise. Reason number six only CVT gearbox available. In a bid to push fuel efficiency to its limits, Honda had to sacrifice some driving comforts, one of which was a responsive and exciting transmission. Fewer and fewer Honda models utilize conventional automatic transmissions, like the most recent addition to Honda's gearbox family, the 10-speed auto. Instead, the company has started phasing in a CVT transmission throughout its range, and the CRV is no exception. Luckily, Honda's take on the CVT gearbox is arguably the least unrefined of the bunch. Not only does it help the CRV in its quest for above average fuel economy, figures, but it does so in the least obtrusive, albeit unassuming, demeanor. It's neither eager nor reluctant to pass through all matter of different gear ratios at its disposal, but most enthusiasts will likely notice its sluggishness before they recognize its competence. Some droning noise under high acceleration has to be expected though, as that is the very nature of CVTs. Reason number 5. Substandard Towing Ratings no one expects a compact crossover to tow as much as a comparable pickup truck, for instance, but some expectations are there regardless. And in the case of Honda's compact, they haven't been met. In fact, by offering a measly 1,000 pounds of towing capacity, the Honda CRV falls well short of its segment's average. Or at least the hybrid models do. Conventional turbocharged four cylinder powered CRVs fare slightly better by being able to take on a maximum of 1,500 pounds of trailer towing. That's at least on par with the competitor's base models. Although most of the CRV's rivals offer substantially more capable alternatives when properly equipped. By substantially more capable, try at least twice as competent than the most towing proficient CRV. The Toyota RAV4 and Ford Escape will be able to pull up to 3,500 pounds of trailer provided certain conditions are met. Even the Mazda CX-5 is capable of pulling up to 2,000 pounds in its most competent form. And don't even get us started on the Jeep Cherokee, but we digress. If there is a clear-cut disadvantage the Honda CRV exhibits compared to its main rivals, it would be the towing capacity. Although relatively fuel efficient, the CRV's powertrains come back to bite the crossover's rear, as their lack of power obviously translates to poor performance in more ways than one. Reason number four, unacceptably inadequate infotainment system. For one of the more expensive compact crossovers on the market, the Honda CRV sure does fail to cover all bases. Mainly, it provides an inadequately small infotainment display which is bound to lead to more frustration than it's worth. At least Honda was sensible enough to provide both the volume and tuning physical knobs to go alongside the base 7-inch screen, half of which you'll lose if you opt for a 9-inch upgrade in the range topping models. More precisely, the larger display comes with sacrificing the tuning knob but keeps the physical volume control intact. It also throws in the wireless smartphone charging capability, which would have made it a worthy trade-off had it not been so expensive. Not to mention that the CRV's competitors almost unanimously offer vastly superior infotainment systems at a fraction of the price, with the Ford Escape going as far as to tie its infotainment to a 13.2-inch display. Reason number three, polarizing exterior design. 
Looking at the current CRV models from all angles, there's admittedly very little wrong with them. However, looking back a few years, there doesn't seem to be much improvement on that front either. The CRV's design remained stagnant for far too long while the competition adapted to modern day requirements and rectified its shortcomings. The CRV is in desperate need of an overhaul if it is to remain relevant in the long run, and most of the required changes would have something to do with its wagon like rear end. Overall, though, the CRV could be described as an overgrown Civic hatchback, which, depending on the perspective might either be a favorable or undesirable comparison. Even the interior resembles that of the company's sedan and hatchback line, especially the smaller HRV crossover. At least the cabin design is handsome and practical, if not original, so the lack of flair is easier to forgive. Reason number two, limited off-roading potential. Lacking a dedicated off-road oriented model in the compact crossover segment wasn't necessarily a make or break situation, but it arguably became so in recent years. Almost every competitor now offers a dedicated off-road trim in its portfolio as the likes of the Subaru Forester Wilderness and Toyota RAV4 TRD off-road seemingly keep on spouting from the ground nowadays. Meanwhile, dedicated off-road oriented small SUVs like the Ford Bronco Sport are almost equally impressive across the board, and their universal appeal isn't something that automakers like Honda can afford to overlook. Not only does the CRV lack a dedicated off-roading trim, but all the range-topping sport touring hybrid models start out as front-wheel drivers. Honda will happily supply them with all-wheel drive, but only after an additional one-time payment of $1,500. Even so, readily available all-wheel drive hardly boosts the CRV's off-road credentials by a significant margin. It does raise its ground clearance by 0.4 inches to 8.2 inches total, but even so, the CRV falls short compared to Toyota's and especially especially Subaru's counterparts. Reason number one, higher starting price. The Honda CRV offers plenty of qualities all around, some of which you'll be hard pressed to find anywhere else. But is it enough to warrant a higher starting sticker? That's something every individual prospective buyer will have to decide on their own. At $29,500 before the mandatory destination fee, the entry level Honda CRV sits atop the segment for the wrong reason. It's equally expensive as the base Ford Escape, but not nearly as enticing as the Subaru Forester or even the Toyota RAV4. Throw in the $1,500 worth of available all wheel drive, and the starting price soars well north of the $30,000 banner. Even the first available trim level upgrade starts off from $32,000, which, with the addition of delivery charges and an all-wheel drive option, translates to something more like $35,000. Not to mention the hybrid powertrain upgrade or the added premium of range-topping models, which pushes the MSRP to $40,200 for the sport touring hybrid trim. At least the range-topping models already factor in the all-wheel drive upgrade's costs. Although the competitor's range topic models also require more than $40,000, with the exception of the significantly more affordable but non-hybrid Subaru Forester, questions have to be raised about the Honda CRV's higher entry-level pricing. There's arguably very little that the base CRV does better than its $1,000 cheaper Toyota RAV4 counterpart. Interiors are of similar quality, the feature set is pretty much the same, and the fuel economy ratings are virtually identical. Subaru Forester and even its larger sibling, the Outback, offer an even more affordable alternative with arguably increased practicality scores. Regardless of its shortcomings, which are neither significant nor numerous, the Honda CRV is still one of the best options money can buy in the compact crossover SUV class. It's one of the most well-rounded compacts on the market with loads of practicality, potential, entertaining road matters, and an increasingly important hybrid alternative within its lineup. As such, the CRV appeals to a wider range of buyers than most of its competitors, and only the most specific among them will be unimpressed by one of its covered shortcomings. Thanks for watching and see you next time.